In this lecture, let's go ahead and let's create our very first custom middleware and let's use it in our ASP.NET Core application. For that, let's first go ahead and let's create a new ASP.NET Core project. So here, let's select web and from this drop down, select C sharp. And here, we want to use this template ASP.NET Core empty. Let's select that and let's click on this next button. Here, let's provide a name for the project. Let's simply call it middleware. Okay, and if you want, you can also change the solution name. By default, it will be same as the project name, but I'm going to keep the same solution name as the project name. And I want to save this project inside C drive and in there, I have this ASP.NET Core folder. So there, I want to save this project. Let's click on this next button again. And here, Let's select .NET version 7.0 and I don't want to configure HTTPS for now. So I will simply uncheck this checkbox. Okay. And let's click on this create button. So it should create a new ASP.NET core project for us. And that project will be an empty project because here we have selected ASP.NET core empty template. Let's go ahead and let's close this overview tab from here. Okay. And let's open this program.cs file. All right. So as we learned before in the first section of this course, in the first line, we are creating an instance of web application builder. Using this, we can do some configuration for our ASP.NET Core application. And we will talk about it in great detail in our coming lectures. For now, let's simply understand that here we are creating an instance of web application builder. Now using that web application builder instance, here we are creating an instance of web application class, as you can see. Okay, so this app here, which you see, which is created by calling this build method on this builder, and this builder is basically an instance of web application builder. So when we call this build method on an instance of web application builder, it is going to return us an instance of web application. And this web application is our ASP.NET Core application. Okay. Finally, here we are defining a route using this map get method on this application. And then here we are calling this run method on this app. So basically, this run method is going to start the server. And on that server, this ASP.NET Core application will be hosted. Okay. Now, if we see this map get, basically here we are creating a route. So here we are defining the route. So the route is basically this root URL. So whenever a user makes a get request to this root URL, we have learned that this callback function will be executed. And this callback function here is nothing but a middleware function. So this middleware function gets executed for each request which is made on this root URL, for each get request which is made on this root URL. Now, since we have not talked about routes yet, so I will remove this line of code from here. Now, we basically have these two lines of code. So at this line, we are creating our ASP.NET Core application and then we are hosting it on the server. But we are doing nothing else here. So if I run this application, you see, it says it cannot find the page. Why? Because from here, let me stop the application now. So from here, we have started the application, we have hosted it, but we have not specified how to handle the requests, right? What will happen when a request will come to the server that we have not specified here and that we can specify by passing a callback function to this run method. So here, let's pass a callback function. And this callback function, which we are passing to this run method, it is going to receive an instance of HTTP context object. Let's call it context. And using this context object, let's return some response from this callback function. For that, on this context, let's access the response object. And on that, let's use write a sync. Okay. And from here, let's return some text response. So let's say, welcome from ASP.NET Core app, a simple text response. Now, 
since we are using an async method here here we also need to use the await keyword because here we want to wait for this method to finish its job okay and since we are using this await keyword here we need to make this function as async all right so now the server knows what to do when a new request comes to the server earlier when we were not passing any callback function to this run method that time the server was not aware what to do whenever a request comes to the server but now the server knows that it has to execute this function whenever a new request hits the server let's actually see that let's run this application again but before that we also need to start the server so on this app let's again call this run so this run method where we are not passing any callback function to it it is going to start the server and on that server it is going to host this asp.net co application let me run this application so now you can see we are getting some response here in the web page because now the server knows what to do when a new request comes to the server so here no matter which url we type for example if i type root url slash home there also we are going to receive the same response if i type root url slash about there also we are going to receive the same response but here at least the server now knows what to do whenever a new request hits the server that's because here we are using this run method and to that we are passing a callback function and whenever a new request will hit the server no matter to which url we have made the request as long as it contains this local host colon 5045 so this root this is the root url this is the url on which our application is hosted our application is running so as long as the url contains this part after that no matter what we type this callback function is going to be executed for that request and this callback function here it is a middleware why because this function here is getting executed for each request and if you see inside this middleware function we are manipulating the response basically here we are adding some body to this response okay so this function here is a middleware function so whatever logic we will write inside this function that logic will be applied for each request which we are going to receive on the server but we learned that we can also execute multiple middlewares on a request so let's say if i go ahead and if i create a new middleware using this run method something like this and there i want to add some new response maybe this is my first esp.net core app okay so here we have created two middlewares so from our previous lecture we learned that we can execute multiple middlewares on a request and those middlewares should be executed in the order in which we have defined so basically here from our previous lecture this middleware function should be executed first and then on top of that this middleware function should get executed right let's see if that's the case so let me put a breakpoint here inside this one and let's also put a breakpoint here let's run this application so you will see that this breakpoint has hit let's press f10 so this text response will be sent from here let's press f10 again and let's press f10 again okay now here you will see the request is coming two times here that's because when we make a request to a web page there the first request is made to the web page and then the browser also makes a request an automatic request to request for the fav icon of that web application okay so you can ignore this second request here the first request was for the actual web page and the second request was made to get the fav icon from the server so here we can ignore the second request now again if i press f10 and f10 you will see that we can see this response in the web page but this middle fair function was not called and that's why this breakpoint did not hit and we did not see this text in the response now you might ask 
why this middleware was not called. Because in the last lecture, we learned that we can execute multiple middlewares on a request. And those middlewares will be executed in the order in which we have defined it. Then why this middleware was not called? That's because in the last lecture, we also learned that in order to call the next middleware in the request pipeline, we need to call the next method from the previous middleware function. So from the previous middleware function, we are not calling the next method. And since we are not calling the next method, this next middleware function is not getting called. Okay. Now the next question is, can we call the next method from within this middleware function? The answer is no. Here, we cannot call the next method from within this middleware function because this run method, it does not get the next method as its argument. Basically, next method is something which we should get as an argument. And this run method does not get the next method as its argument. And that's why we cannot call next method from within the callback function of run method from within the middleware function, which we pass to the run method then how it is possible to chain multiple middlewares and execute those multiple middlewares on the request? Well, for that, we have another option. We have another method and we will talk about that method in our next lecture. But for now, understand that in the last lecture, I also mentioned that there are some methods, there are some middlewares which might not call the next middleware in the request pipeline. And such middlewares are called as terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware so using this run method we actually create a terminal or short circuiting middleware because when we create a middleware using the run method that middleware cannot call the next middleware in the request pipeline so that's why whatever middleware we create using this run method like we are doing here this middleware is a short circuiting middleware because it cannot call the next middleware in the request pipeline so the takeaway from this lecture is that using the run method, we cannot chain multiple middlewares. So in the next lecture, let's learn how we can chain multiple middlewares. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.